just going to start that. males 
to elicit the highest work rate, or sorry, the highest VO2 max. We also examined if there was a significant difference in VO2 and heart rate values during ramp and verification tests, as well as between verification tests. It was suggest or we hypothesized that some maximum constant power tests would result in the highest VO2 max for this population. So, participants. We had nine healthy males between the ages of 18 and 35 participate in the study. And in order to be in the study, they had to have a BMI greater than 30. Here you can see the age. We had an average of 24. And all participants were between a 1, which is light activity, and 6 on the credit um, physical activity rating, which goes up to 10, so they were fairly low in physical activity, most of them below 5. And all of them, as I said, had to have a BMI greater than 30, and we had one as high as 43 in the study. So they came in for six separate occasions. The first visit was just the ramp test on the cycle ergometer, where we used their physical activity rating to come up with a wattage per minute um, range for them, and then we subtracted three watts per minute just because their weight greatly overestimated their ability to exercise. During visits two through five, they performed a random order of the verification tests at 80, 90, 100, and 105 percent of the wattage attained during the max test. And then the last test, they performed a three minute critical power. And here's a picture of one of the older types of VO2 max testing to compare how different it was during the beginning of the testing. For the statistics, we ran a repeated measure analysis of ANOVA with von Kroni post hoc to assess the difference between the VO2 max and heart rate values. We also did a Pearson correlation to test if there was a significant correlation between the VO2 max in liter per minute and heart rate max between the tests and a value of less than 0.05 is considered to be statistically significant. Here you can see the results. So during all the testing, the ramp and verification tests, you can see that the ramp had the lowest average VO2 max, and then after that, the 105, with the 90% having the highest. And also, similar results with the heart rate max, we have 105 at the lowest, and then the highest at the 80%. But all of the ramp and 100 through 100 have very similar results with the 105 having a much lower, statistically significant lower heart rate. And here you can see the variation of time for VO2 max. During the ramp, it was an average of about eight minutes, but then the 105 went as low as two minutes. But you can see that although there is a huge difference in the time, there is not a huge statistically significant difference in the VO2, showing that time may not necessarily play a huge role with these participants in order to elicit VO2 max. And here we have all the mean VO2 results um, with the 90% having a p-value of 0.06, so a trend, not necessarily statistically significant at this point, in a higher view to compared to the 105%. And that was seen, we have the same results for um, the, all the verification tests compared to one another, as well as with the ramp included. And here are the heart rate max results. You can see that we had a significant difference between the 80 and 90 when compared to the 105 at 0 0.018, 0 0.015. Um, this could be because the 105 was too far in the severe exercise domain. And it was also noted that 7 of 9 of our participants had a higher heart rate max in these two submaximal work rates than in any other test throughout the procedure. And here is a one minute mean oxygen uptake of a typical participant. 
So this is probably our most important chart because it shows that despite differences in time, there is there are very similar VO2 max results elicited. Although it can range from two minutes to nine minutes, they're all about the same range. But it also shows the importance of a verification-based test because as you can see, the 100% um, test is slightly higher than the RAM, which could be very important for um, ex prescribing exercise based on their intensity. They may have not performed the true max during the first test. So our results indicate that submaximal work rates set at 90% of the wattage max attained during the great exercise may elicit the highest view to max and heart rate max in these individuals. This was the first study to validate the applicability of submaximal work rates in this population. There have been two other studies that have looked at obese individuals and verification phase tests. The first was with Wood et al. They examined 67 males and 68 females. Either they were categorized as overweight with their um, BMI 25 to 29.9 .9 or obese BMI over 30. And they all performed a great exercise test on the treadmill at 2.5% grade increase per minute until volitional exhaustion. Then they had a 5 to 10 minute cool down period to recover. Then they performed a verification phase set at 0.5 kilometers per hour higher than the max attained in the graded exercise test. They observed no differences between the VO2 max and heart rate maxes attained during the graded the grade exercise test and the verification phase. After that test, Sawyer et al. discovered that um, sedentary adults with obesity are capable of performing and completing verification phase tests without any um, adverse effects. In this study, they had 10 men and 9 women who performed VO2 max tests on the cycle ergometer, and they all had VMI over 30. After a 5 to 10 minute cool down, they performed a 100% um, verification phase at maximal wattage achieved during the ramp test. 13 of the 19 participants had a higher heart rate of at least sorry, VO2 max of at least 2%, and then had most participants had a higher heart rate between 2 and 14 beats per minute during the verification test. And although none of the result or the VO2 max was not significant, there was still a higher achieved VO2 max during the verification phase. And our results agree with Sawyer in that these individuals are capable of performing verification tests without any so we also discovered that work rates at 90% of wattage max may elicit the highest VO2 max and work rates at 105 are potentially uh, able to decrease VO2 max in most participants. And this may be, as Eric said, because 105 may be too far into the severe exercise domain to elicit a true max. Um, so like the graph showed, we had a significantly lower heart rate in the 105 when compared to the 80 and 90. And also this may have been because 105 was too high. And these results are really important because when prescribing exercise, you want to use an accurate heart rate. So for one participant, his heart rate was at 166 for the 90%, but then only 151 for the 105. So if we prescribe him exercise at 70%, he would be at about 116 beats per minute for the higher heart rate, but only 106 for the 151 achieved during the 105% test. So as you can see, that's a pretty big difference. It's 10 beats per minute that could be performing at like 65% rather than 70. So he, they may not see the results they want from following the exercise program that underestimates their heart rate. We had a few limitations with this study. So the warm-up during the verification test was only set at 50 watts, which may potentially be too low for them to properly warm up before going into severe exercise, especially the 105%. However, ACSM has recommended that deconditioned individuals, which most likely most of these were, um, it can be set at around 
to the floor performing severe exercise. So 50 watts may have been around 30% for most participants. Also, we had a very small sample size, very high dropout rate for participants decided to not continue the study. And we did not measure body composition to determine if individuals were obese. That may have helped categorize them and confirm that they're obese, although we are planning on having them return and using Godpod -Bod to confirm their body fat. And we are planning on having more participants to increase our sample size. So, practical application. This is the first of its kind to test supermaximal, maximal, and submaximal in this specific population. We saw a trend towards verification tests set at 90%, and work rates too high above critical power, um, maybe too far in the severe exercise domain to elicit a VO2 max and heart rate max. So we've just shown that it's important in this population especially to perform a verification test to confirm the attainment of a true VO2 max and heart rate max.